I-25 male was still on a high four months ago when I proposed to my fiancé 24 female. The proposal was a public affair with all of our friends and family present. My mother was especially joyful because she told me she never expected me to get married, because, after all, I was always so picky. This is true, I'm the type of person who takes months of research to select the perfect watch or television. My mom would get so frustrated when she took me to school shopping because I would take all day to pick out one outfit. My father on the other hand did not mind because he was the same way, he would say if you were going to do something do it once and do it right. Those words were the base of my decision to end my relationship with my fiancé when I discovered she was cheating on me with her coworker. My then fiancé and I met at the end of our junior year of college, you can say it was love at first sight. Not only did I love how she looked, but I also liked how she carried herself, the best way I could describe her demeanor it's similar to a first lady somebody with class and dignity. When I first saw her I said to myself any man would be proud to have this lovely lady on their arm. We met at a house party and I approached her using a line out of a movie, I asked her if she knew who the pretty girl at the party was. She said who with an angry look, and I said that girl behind you. She turned around and looked into a mirror and started laughing, then I knew I had her. We talked the entire night until we both noticed it was about 3 am, I asked her if she had anybody waiting on her and she said no, then I suggested we go to the Waffle House for breakfast and she said yes. This was the beginning of our courtship that led to me asking for her hand in marriage two years later. After a year of blissful dating, we got an apartment together and that's when I started to learn more about my fiancé. Nothing major a few personality flaws such as having to have her way or she would go silent for a long period, still living a semi-party life. Going out two or three times a week, on some occasions, I would join her, but mostly it was my fiancé and her co-workers. I thought our lives would change once we committed to each other. I desired a home life where our focus was on each other and building a life together, where my fiancé was straggling the fence between being in a relationship and being single. Our life frustrated me but not to the point where I was ready to give up on our relationship. I had conversations with my best friend and my dad and they both said to give my fiancé time to adjust to her new normal. I told both of them we've been together for over a year and I have proposed to her, how much time does she need? The only response I received was some people take time to completely settle down, she will slow down after a while. After speaking with my father and my best friend and listening to their advice I calmed down a bit and decided to do the best I could to be a supporting loving partner. My fiancé worked for an advertisement firm and I understood the necessity for marketing, but many of her nights out were more social than professional. As time went on I started to get lukewarm invitations to her nights out with her co-works to the point of feeling like I was more of a pain in the ass than a person she wanted with her as she interacted with her co-workers. Most of the nights out with her co-workers were going to different bars and having dinner at different restaurants to try the newest foods or different types of food. One restaurant my fiancé wanted to go to often was a Nigerian restaurant. I had never had Nigerian food before. Growing up in the Midwest there were one or two Nigerians in our town and zero Nigerian restaurants. The few Nigerians in our college town were football players, a crowd that I nor my finance hung out with. My fiancé's company always throws a big Christmas party every year, a chance for marketing and for all the employees to let their hair down. This would be the second Christmas party I attended at my fiancé's work, the first one was a total blast and the company did not spare any expenses. The Christmas party was held at a five-star hotel and the food was catered by a few of the top restaurants in the city. This was also the time that all employees received their end-of-year bonus and my fiancé was looking forward to a big bonus because she had brought in a few new clients. According to her, it was a team effort but she was the leader of the team. She talked about what we would do with her end of the year bonus and I suggested we use it for a down payment on a new house and she found that idea. I thought that was strange did she expect us to rent for the rest of our lives, it never did to me that maybe she would prefer to purchase a house with someone else. We both went shopping a few weeks before the big Christmas party to purchase new outfits. 
I wanted to go to a tailor and have a tailored suit and a matching dress made for my fiancé. She shot that idea down saying we would look like nerds and she had a dress in mind that she'd been looking at for 6 months in preparation for the Christmas party. Bump I told her I thought we would look like the hottest couple at the party but I gave in and had a suit made and my fiancé went shopping and purchased her the dress she wanted. The big day was upon us and I asked my fiancé if I could see her dress and she said I would have to wait for the night of the party like everybody else but I would not be disappointed. I picked up my tailored suit a day before the party and it fit well, my fiancé went out to have her hair and nails done while I sat at home to tidy up our apartment. My fiancé asked me to get dressed in the spare bedroom so she could have our bedroom to get ready, I complied and waited about 3 hours for her to get ready. When she came out of the bedroom parading around the living room I was totally surprised at the dress she selected. I looked at it and asked her where the rest of the dress was, my fiancé was mad I knew she was expecting me to say how good she looked, but we're both from a conservative family and I had never seen her dress this way. She stormed out of the apartment looked back and said let's take separate cars. This shocked me, I thought it was an overreaction to obvious questions giving out the background. I had no choice but to take my own car, by the time I got to the parking garage, she was speeding off. I arrived at the party about 20 minutes after my fiancé and walked in looking for my fiancé. I ran into a few of her co-workers whom I'd met during the previous outing or the last Christmas party. We talked for a while then I asked her co-worker if he had seen my fiancé, before he could speak I spotted her across the room talking with a guy I'd never met. As I was walking toward my fiancé, her co-worker had a look like he wanted to tell me something but then he said enjoy the party. I walked over to my fiancé, she had her back turned towards me and I heard the one word that helped me discover my fiancé was cheating on me. She told the guy she was talking to, I will be right back baby. I had to do a double take did she just call him baby? At that moment my fiancé spotted me mustered up a smile and said you finally made it. I told her I've been here for over 20 minutes you were busy talking to that guy. Then I asked her who he was and she said he was a new employee who started working for the company 6 months ago. I guess it was not a coincidence that my fiancé started going out more about 5 months ago. My gut was telling me they were more to their relationship than co-workers, the conversation they were having looked intimate and my finance had that look on her face when we used to have intimate conversations. I noticed my fiancé had two drinks in her hand. I took one of them told her thanks, and walked off. I'm sure the other drink was for her coworker, but as I noticed the drink line was long, I wanted to see if she would get back in line to get another drink or if she would follow me over to where I was going. I walked away and looked back about a minute later and she was in line getting another drink. I was so pissed, the level of disrespect was beyond belief. I decided to go back and speak with my fiancé's co-worker, the one that I said hi to when I first came in. I located him in the snack section and struck up another conversation. After about 5 minutes of small talk, I asked him about the guy my fiancé was talking to and he said he was new to the company, I thought you both knew him because he went to the same college as you and your fiancé. This was a shock to me, I did not know this guy went to the same college as me and my fiancé and this was something she never shared with me. I then decided to let the cat out of the bag, to my fiancé's co-worker. The one I was speaking with did not know me well, I looked at him and said I think something is going on with my fiancé, and this guy. My fiancé's co-worker said trust me, a lot of people at work have noticed their closeness. The last thing I wanted was for my thoughts to be true, so I asked him to elaborate a little more. He said they always go on breaks together and lunch at the same time, when we have office get-togethers they always leave early, normally 5 or 10 minutes after each other. This revelation was a shock because my fiancé never came home early from a night out with her co-workers. I asked my fiancé's co-worker if we could exchange numbers and he said yes, I asked him if it was possible to find out where this guy lived and he said it would be easy we all exchanged addresses for office together. I've been to his place. I made it a point not to chase my fiancé, I wanted to see how much time she would spend with her co-worker friend. 
About a half hour later after she spotted me looking at her and her co-worker she walked over to a few other co-workers and then made her way over to me. She had the nerve to ask why have I been ignoring her, I tried not to look too angry I said you were busy in that other guy's face I was not sure if you had time for me. I think she noticed my anger and said I was just making rounds and interacting with all of my team. I told her I'm sure the rest of the team appreciated the 3 minutes you gave them and walked away from her to get another drink. Since I was having a shitty time I might as well get shit faced for free. The company paid for a room for the employees that wanted on and my fiancé and I got a room for the night. This time my fiancé followed me, I guess she was feeling guilty or thought I thought something was going on with her and her coworker. She trailed me the remainder of the night. My fiancé got the big bonus she was expecting and was over the moon. She called her parents and shared the news, then I told her I sent her parents a picture of us at the Christmas party, she almost shit a brick, and she said why did you do that? I told her I wanted them to see how pretty she looked. I never sent the picture but it was fun making her squirm after the disrespect she showed me at her company's Christmas party. One thing that I noticed a week after the big Christmas party was my fiancé introduced me to everybody that I did not know by my first name. At the previous Christmas party, I was introduced as her fiancé. It took my fiancé three weeks before she said don't wait up for me I'm going out with my coworkers after work. By this time I was in good with her other coworker and I asked him to let me know where they would be and when my fiancé and the other coworker would leave. At 7 he texted me and told me the name of the restaurant they were at, I drove there and parked across the street and about an hour later he told me my fiancé left the restaurant. I spotted her coming out of the restaurant and she headed towards her car, I was hoping she would head home but then I saw her co-worker's friend come out and head towards her car. He walked up to her and gave her a big kiss and then got in her car. They drove to an apartment complex and I watched them walk in holding hands. I could not get a look inside so I headed home. I could not sleep and just lay in bed staring at the ceiling wondering how everything went for roses to shit. I reflected for the majority of the night until I heard my fiancé come in. I pretended to be asleep and waited until she went to sleep grabbed her phone and went into the spare bedroom. I had never checked my fiancé's phone before and we never discussed a phone policy, but I knew her code. We shared the same code which was the date we first went to the Waffle House. Either she did not give a shit or she was very careless, there were a ton of text with sexual language nudes, and videos of them having sex. I sent everything to my phone and put her phone back in the same location face down as she had it. All traces of me sending myself screenshots were deleted. I was not going to marry my ex-fiancé but I wanted to inflict a little pain for wasting so many years of my life and living a lie while lying to my face. The worst part of all of this was not her cheating but the disappointment my mother would have when she found out I was not going to get married. My mom a church going woman had been bragging to the entire congregation that I was getting married and one day she would be a grandmother. I hate to make that call to my mother but I remembered what my father used to say if you are going to do something do it right the first time. I called my ex-fiancé co-work the one I befriended and asked him if he had a listing of their company's employee's email and he said yes and emailed me the list. Next, I searched for a furnished apartment, one that I could move into in a few weeks, and was able to find one. All I had to do now was put up with my ex-fiancé for two weeks. Surprisingly our ex-life only dipped a little bit, I guess you can do that when you have youth on your side. Looking back during our college days there were times when I thought my then girlfriend was spending a lot of time in study sessions, now I know that time was spent being a side piece to a college football player. None the wiser, would always wish her well and I would tell her to study hard it will pay off in the long run. I guess you can say her studying paid off but not the way she expected it to. I was scheduled to move into my new apartment on Monday, Friday morning I emailed my ex-fiancé nudes and s at UAL videos to her job from a burner phone. About an hour later I received a call from my ex-fiancé crying saying she had been let go from work due to cutbacks. I said cut cutbacks, I will be right over to your job, she quickly said no don't come over here I will meet you at home. 
I went to our apartment and she was there crying and said she had put her heart and soul into that job and they just let her go. I said let's go over to your job and fight for it, heading to the door. She quickly jumped up grabbed my arm and said let it go I'll get another job. Before I made it to our apartment I called my ex fiance co-worker the one I befriended and he told me all about the fallout. He said my fiancé was the last one to find out why people were talking and looking in her direction. I purposely did not include her email address and her AP's email address. The office was all talk for about an hour when my fiancé and her AP were called into the office. They were shown the email of the nudes and videos and were terminated, the two of them had to do a walk of shame out of the building. Security was called to escort them out of the building. My ex fiancé's former co-worker friend said they were both blaming each other for the email and he said he could see my ex fiancé hitting her AP and yelling you did this because I refused to leave my fiancé. Of course, her AP denied that and said he did not have anything to do with the email and why would so I would lose my job, that's crazy. My ex fiancé was so mad she could not think straight, straight enough to realize her AP was correct. We spent the weekend not speaking much her in bed crying and me in the spare room laughing my ass off. I was originally planning on ghosting my ex but I decided on another course of action. On Monday I took the full day off and moved a few small things to my new place. Then I went back to the apartment I shared with my fiancé and slammed the front door, walked into the bedroom door, and slammed the door yelling at my ex-fiancé you cheated on me with your coworker. somebody emailed me proof. She started crying and said she was sorry, it was a mistake, please forgive me. I asked her why, what did I wrong or what did I not give her? Come to find out my ex-fiancé was her co-worker's friend with benefits in college while we dated and she got him the job so he could be close to her. This was a revelation I did not expect and I felt so betrayed. She said she realized she loved me and only wanted me. I asked her when she realized you loved me when you were out of a job and about to be homeless. I knew what she was saying was bullshit and she wanted both of us. Me for my financial security and him for I guess his bedroom skills. I told my ex I was moving out and we were over, I packed the rest of my things and moved into my new place. On the way to my new place, I emailed her conservative family to thank them for always being so kind to me and sent the proof I had of my ex fiance affair. I'm sure her Nigerian lover will enjoy Christmas with her conservative family. I later discovered my ex fiance family disowned her and she and her AP lasted for a year. He moved to another city. For me, I met a lovely lady and we have been dating for over 6 months. I'm taking things slow to make sure my new girlfriend is truly a good girl. I've been in IC and everyday life gets a little better. After my ex-fiancé broke up with her AP she kept calling me. I would send her calls to voicemail until my girlfriend said I either had to take her call to see what she wanted or change my number. I didn't want to go through the pain of changing my number so I took her call. She asked to meet at all places Waffle House, my girlfriend and I had discussed the possibility of her wanting to meet so we had a game plan. My girlfriend rode in the car with me and stayed in the car, I went inside where my ex fiance was already seated. I was determined to not show any ill will toward her. What I learned in IC if you continue to harbor hate you will never truly recover. I asked her what she wanted and she asked to order first and I told the waitress to put this on separate checks. My ex fiance had a disappointed look on her face when she heard that, the look that said I think he has truly moved on. She attempted to small talk for a while then I got to the point where I asked her what she wanted and she said her friend as she called him which was her AP left her and said he did not want anything to do with her. I told her he was a wise man not to want to have anything to do with her since she was an easy woman. She started to cry and I truly felt bad not for her but for myself I think I just had a major setback in my IC skills. I yelled to the waitress to make my order to go. My ex fiance asked me why I ordered two plates, I said my girlfriend is waiting for me in the car. When my ex finance asked me why I would not give her another chance I told her I don't play in a game where the other people are wise and I'm stupid, I look for a place where I'm wise and they're stupid. 
I wished her luck in life grabbed my order and walked out. When I got in the car I could see my ex-fiancé with her hand in her face, I could not muster up the emotions to feel sorry for her but I did feel sorry for her child. That was the last time I saw my ex-fiancé, I blocked her on all social media platforms and changed my phone number. Today I'm in a much better place since married my girlfriend and we have two small children a cat and a dog. Wow OP it sounds like you did everything correctly in this relationship and your fiancé took you for granted. I'm glad you stood up for yourself and found the true love of your life. Good on you. Thank you for listening to today's story, please comment below on your opinion of today's story. If there is a story you would like to share with me please email the story to me. If you are not subscribed please take the time to subscribe and like, and I will see you in the following story, take care.